One man can change the world with a bullet in the right place. Welcome back to the podcast. This is known as the New to Pew Podcast. My name is Max Fallis. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving us a shot. Thank you for downloading the data into your podcast aggregator. And I'm not alone. No, you may ask yourself. Who the fuck is that guy? My co-host is known (laughs) as the BBR Bagman. Sir, how are you? Hi. (laughs) I'm just happy to be here. We're happy to have you. You know why? Because you light up my life, sir. And that is the episode title number 15, I believe we're at now. We're gonna yeah, talk we're on 15, dude. We're going to talk about lights, LED flashers and cool stuff to tactically help you see your target. This came from mm-hmm. a small video that I dumped into on my YouTube rabbit holes of should you have your tack light on your handgun for home defense or have it in the other hand and there's various schools of thought so let's talk about it uh on the gun or off the gun what do you got so your your options as discussed are basically a handheld light versus a weapon mounted light which is often abbreviated as wml and that can be mounted to a handgun or mounted to a rifle or mounted to a shotgun but the idea is that you can have a light on board on the firearm versus a handheld flashlight. Um, and this is, this is always a point of contention because some people are adamant in the belief that it has to be on the weapon and other people um, don't follow that belief. And, and for whatever reason, people get angry about it. So you, you can find a lot of internet arguments about the subject. Um, I see value in both, but I don't think it has to be on the the weapon because you don't always want to point a gun at what you're looking at. Sometimes you want just a handheld light. Mm -hmm. So even if you have a weapon mounted light, you should have a handheld backup. It's kind of my opinion there. Other, other, yeah, the best of both worlds. And that way, if you, if you need to search or you need to, um, you, if you need to do something where you don't want to point the gun at what you're doing, and there's plenty of scenarios where that's the preferred option, mm-hmm. um, let's say you're working in law enforcement and someone has been injured and you need to look at them to determine what their injuries are, you don't want to do that with the light that's mounted to your handgun. It poses yeah. an unnecessary risk in a high-stress situation. Should there be a light on the gun for for law enforcement? Absolutely, they're outside after dark, you know. Especially if you're working night shift, God forbid you need to utilize your firearm. You need to be able to identify the threat accurately, and a white light is going to help that. Um, same thing with a rifle or shotgun mounted light. Yeah, that's appropriate, but so is having a non weapon mounted light, so that you can do those other administrative things. Uh, trick I picked up from Mike Wolf over at Justifiable Force, and hopefully you took his course last weekend. Um, if you are in a room, most homes in the U.S. have the ceiling painted white. So if you point the light at the ceiling and turn it on, it's going to light up the whole room mm. instead of just where the beam of the light is. And I'm not a lumens versus candela expert. Right, I know some people really get into the weeds about that stuff too, as, as to what is the more accurate measurement of light output. And from my understanding, Candela gives you a better idea of how bright that light's actually going to be. There's some some variables to lumens where they can kind of fudge the numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not really my area of expertise. As as long as it's bright, I'm usually pretty happy. What I have seen in certain training environments, though, is if you have a, a white light that's too bright. You can wash out your background or wash out your target and not be able to accurately identify it because you basically blind yourself. Mm -hmm. So that may be something to consider is that you should have variable brightnesses on that light so you can turn it down if you need to. You want want the max power for range when you're outdoors, but if you're inside, it may be beneficial to turn it down. That's that's where I'm getting at. Yeah, the... 
one, two, the two flashlights that I have, there's a high brightness, low brightness, and then flash. So mm-hmm. that seems to be the standard question mark. Tactical strobe function, which I find to be completely useless. I'm sure someone more well-versed in the, the tactical use of a flashlight is going to write in and, and correct me on that. But the argument with that is it can disrupt the person you're shining the light at yeah. and cause them problems. I just find it to be an annoying setting that I never find, I never have a need for. Yeah, so yeah, I can see, I can see the disruption being useful, but the issue with that is you got to click the thing three times to get to that setting. So, and some of them you don't, some of them, ha- you know, some of the tack lights you can like double tap and it goes into that mode. And I'm, I'm personally, I'm not a fan, but that's, that's just my opinion. And okay, you probably care as much about my opinion as you do my orgasm. At this- <laughs> You don't care if I even have one. So. That's uh, going to go on a shirt, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't be surprised when we when I contact Stuck Not Customs about getting a sh- uh, uh, at least a sticker. There saying you go. And you care about my opinion as much as you care about my orgasms. So I've also seen a couple of videos that of um, people using lights to communicate. So sure. that comes into, so when you buy a, what people refer to as a tactical flashlight, you have your actual flashlight and then there's the button mechanisms, membrane switches. That's the best word for it. The membrane switches mm-hmm. that typically for like rifles and shotguns, then there's some people that uh, at least attempt to utilize the light as a way of communication like okay go when the light flashes hit the light that's your command to go um so the 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 membrane switch concept of course me being new to pew i go out and buy a bunch of gadgets and hook it all up to my ar and i got a membrane switch for from this amazon yep from it no wait, <laughs> wait yes yes the light did come from amazon <laughs> sorry um, so it, it was interesting because once I got it all rigged up on my AR, um, mm-hmm. I could feel the buttons. And I, I understand the concept of, you know, push the button. To, you want to go into the room. There's also the cautiousness of you don't want to reveal yourself too early. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So if you're trying to silently move through a location, for like a better term, you don't necessarily want the light on you all the time. You don't want to signal where you're pointing the gun. You don't want to signal where you are if you're in a hostile situation like that. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that there's a method to using a light Mm -hmm. in in a hostile situation, I would say, like that. Sure. Light discipline is is a well-discussed topic in and of itself that you know, concealing your position versus exposing the other person, the argument that, and you can, you can pull up the audio clip from Die Hard, he's shooting at the lights, mm-hmm. that if you have a weapon mounted light and that light is directly in front of you, cause that's where your firearm is, then they're going to aim for that light and probably hit you in the process. They're shooting at the lights. My, my answer to that very quickly is, well, if the lights in front of you and the guns in front of you, so should all the bullets be in front of you. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Yeah, so watching <laughs> watching movies and stuff and TV, you'll see the guy with his hand out and then the arm is in the other, like, off center with the flashlight. I've seen that. So, yeah. What you're talking about is this position. Yep. And what that does is, is you're holding a handgun and then using the other hand to support the handgun because you can't do this. Okay. You have to you have to cross basically cross your wrist with your support hand underneath, and then your hand wrapped up around the outside of your gun hand, so that you can operate the light that way. There's also a way of what's called a a split finger technique, mm-hmm. so that you can hold the gun with two hands and still actuate this light. There's a bunch you, you there's whole courses just on running a light and a gun. Hmm. Um, the other thing that I, I would like to warn the audience about, especially the folks that are new, is that when you buy a, a handgun and you get used to shooting that handgun, and then after a couple of months you decide to add a light to it, 
all of a sudden people start having firearms malfunctions that they're getting jams and stovepipe malfunctions and the gun won't feed properly. And I've had other instructors get very annoyed with me when I tell them that they're limp wristing. Hate it. I am not. I'm an experienced shooter. I put a light on this gun and all of a sudden it doesn't work. It doesn't make any sense. And I pick up the firearm and I hold it tight enough, but because you've added that weight to the front, it's the same as limp wristing. It's changed the balance of the firearms, specifically when we're talking about handguns. Mm -hmm. And that can cause the slide to not move the way it's supposed to because now your balance is off and it's effectively limp wristing. So again, you have to really lock that firearm into position so that it cycles properly. Um, I can I can think of one instructor in particular who was deeply offended when I told him he was limp wristing. And then when I picked up his firearm with the light that had just been I think it had jammed three times in a 10 round magazine and I was being kind of a jerk. I know you're shocked. I blew through two of his mags right there. You need to leave. Like, reload. Boom, 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 boom. Just as fast as I can. I was like, yeah, it seems to be working fine for me. So he got really steamed. So, so you're saying limp, it's limp wristing is mm -hmm. it when it cycles back being that you have it so like how, how does that mechanically mess anywhere up? anywhere in the the process of the gun firing and the slide moving back and forth so it moves to the rear mm -hmm. ejects the round moves forward picks up the new round and loads it into the chamber if anywhere during that process your hand moves up or down it causes that line to now become elliptical and it's going to either short stroke or not move the way it's supposed to because we've added this extra plane of motion to what should be a straight line. I've also seen <laughs> a discussion about um, if your light protrudes past your firearm versus it being flush with the barrel. Um, also affecting right. the cycle, correct? It, it can, yeah, for for the reasons we just talked about. The, the other thing that comes into play there is, depending on where the light is mounted, can affect how a shadow is cast, and you could be losing part of that light. So let's say, let's say you've got a light mounted to your AR, and your barrel extends four inches past the end of your handguard, mm -hmm. right? And your light is mounted at the very end of your handguard. Well, now that barrel is eating some of that light and you could be creating a blind spot there. The shadow of your barrel could be creating a blind spot that you're not aware of. Mm -hmm. uh, the other issue that comes up all the time is the carbon fouling coming off of the firearm when it's being shot, covering the lens of the light. And now you're losing a lot of that brightness and it can be a nuisance to clean. Pro tip, take a chapstick and rub that on the lens of your weapon mounted light. And then you can wipe that stuff off real easy. Smart thinking. Now I know. And knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe. That prevents it from like caking on to your mm -hmm. lens. Yeah, because it's not it's not going on dry. There's a thin film in between. It just means that you can wipe it off a little bit easier. What other kind of tips and tactics should we talk about with the with the light concepts? When you're talking about a long gun, you have to be careful to not you have to make sure all your accessories play well together. Mm -hmm. So if you have a light and you have a tape switch, which is that, that membrane switch you were talking about that gets mounted on somewhere else on the forearm, mm -hmm. you got to make sure those are working in conjunction properly. If you're adding a sling, depending on where the sling is mounted, that can get hung up on the light. And if you're really doing aggressive movements and your sling is caught up on your light, it can end up breaking the light off. And then you don't have a light on your weapon anymore. Yeah, I've seen I've seen all kinds of stuff go wrong in classes. The other thing I've seen is that on occasion, really expensive lights go down when the cheaper light doesn't. So you want a light that's going to be impact resistant and all those things. And that's not necessarily the $500 Surefire. Sometimes the $200 Streamlight is a better option. Going back to the heydays of the 80s, Something that always mm -hmm. sticks out in the Delta Force, all the motorcycles mm -hmm. and the cars had a blue blue light as opposed to regular high lumen. 
is there any uh, advantage to having a blue colored light? Because, you know, blue is my color. So if I can... <laughs> I, I got it. Like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you plug in an audio clip there because I have the, the perfect one from Rambo. What does this one? It's a blue light. What does it do? It turns blue. So I don't know. I don't know if they were doing that for theatrical purposes. I know red light is less disruptive to your natural night vision and mm -hmm. therefore is better in those limited light scenarios. A blue filter could be doing the same thing. Generally, red signifies fire, blue signifies law enforcement. So you got to be careful with some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, a, a blue light. So the other thing is depending on the type of blue light that can be used for blood tracking. For those Ooh. of us who don't have normal color perception, that can help you find blood. It'll it'll shift the color of the background versus the the blood that's on the ground. So if it's you know before sunup, full sunrise, or be full before full sunset, where it's just kind of dusk or dawn, right? Uh, that can, that can be helpful for for tracking a blood trail if you're hunting. Um, they yeah, they make all different kinds of filters for white lights to to get other features out of them hmm. i thought it was a matter of having a light for visual uh benefits but not casting too far of a light like really revealing yourself at a distance going back to the yeah, delta force kind that's, of concept that's the other benefit to and and again i always think of a, a red lens right that was the stuff i used years ago um and I'm trying to remember the, the one light I had that came with individual filters. There might have been a blue one in there, but the red one is the one we use the most. And then there was a, a translucent white. So almost like a photographer would use to really reduce the, the throw of that beam. Right. And that was just for, you know, reading maps in the dark and stuff. So you had light immediately there, but you weren't going to see it from a great distance away. Yeah, you don't want to reveal your, pos your position if you're out in... Right. Lands. Light spectrums, ladies and gentlemen. Do your research. See what you can see. Yeah, there's there's a lot going on there. Um, the trend is to be, has been to make lights brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And I think we've we've passed the point of return. Mm -hmm. Like some of these lights are just so bright it's it's not really beneficial. You know, I've I've seen lights that are over a thousand lumens and over uh, fifteen thousand candela and it ends up being a bit too much you know Is it's it, nice when you have a spotlight that can turn night into day yeah but for the most part that's that's overkill when you're talking about a handheld light or a weapon mounted light especially if you're going into a structure it, okay indoors i see it but if you're outdoors you're trying to have you're trying to replicate the sun i would assume you know if you really <laughs> want to <laughs> if you really want to have sure. you know especially for distances some of us wear glasses so the more light the the easier to m pick out movement and also to uh to disrupt your uh i don't want to say enemy but your adversary um right the brighter light the more effective that tactic would be so i can see that so have a have a flashlight next to your nightstand and also one on yeah. your firearm split the difference that's the yeah best scenario and i i totally understand what you're saying because it, it didn't dawn on me until you said it you know if you're trying to examine something you don't necessarily or someone you don't necessarily want to have a firearm right. pointed at them that's that's a very good point that right um yeah for the bouncer at the club that requires you to carry a firearm uh, weapon mounted light is fine but have a handheld light too for checking ids <laughs> Don't you know, go pointing your gun at everybody that's coming into the club. It, it's funny you say that. Um, I taught my daughter how to maneuver through a crowd at a concert with a flashlight. And, mm -hmm. you know, she's like, well, what do I do? I was like, here, you take this, take this flashlight and you shine it at the floor and you just move with a purpose and people will move out of your way because that's what security does to get through. <clears throat> mm -hmm. and it 
totally worked. My child has been at the front row of almost every concert that she's been to <laughs> because of this tactic. People just move out the way, especially when there's this large black guy following behind her. Like she's like, "Right, oh, this works, Dad." I'm like, "Yeah, I know," because you know it's it's tried and true. Yeah, that's what it is. It's not you cruising behind her. It's <laughs> no, the little no. light in front of her. Yeah, sure. It's, it's the Dollar Tree flashlight that I'm I'm giving. Uh, you the to. Dollar Tree flashlight does it, not the six foot, three hundred pound Titan. Yeah. No, all you need is three AAA batteries and a, and walk with purpose. You'll get to any front row of any concert in the club. Uh, just moving with purpose, like you're headed yeah. somewhere important. Yeah. Generally, people will get out of your way. Very yeah. true. Very true. I've done that. Yeah, but that, that's that's definitely true. That like event staff moves mm -hmm. a certain way and with with purpose. And yeah, I could see people doing that. One I'm not the, a big concert goer. One of the things on my little. Um, EDC flashlight. It has a focuser, so you can zoom and like target something a little bit further on distance. Right. And I've seen uh, security use that to point somebody out to another security guy. Um, mm -hmm. So some flashlights will have just a flooding uh, lens, and then you can focus into right. like a beam, which is a great idea too. It's called spot to flood. There you go. It's adjustable. So from a spotlight to a floodlight. And you don't get, it's not as bright on the flood. It's much brighter on the spot. But, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely beneficial in both modes. Well, uh, speaking of spotlights, you got a sponsor for this uh, episode, sir? How about Pete and Pedro? There you go. This is going to mess with people because last episode I did Naked Armor. And this episode I'm going to do Pete and Pedro, which is another line of men's hair care products and personal hygiene stuff. And again, I've, I've had great success with their, their stuff. You use their beard bomb. I do. And their brush. Their exfoliating bath brush thingy to scrape all yeah. the dead skin cells off you when you're coming home from a hard day at work. I dig it. Like... It's okay. <laughs> I tried a loofah years ago, and and that that sponge uh -huh. thing that you get from the store, and like, it doesn't feel masculine. I'm just gonna just flat out say it. But scrubbing my skin with a hard brush feels right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm the same way. I'm yeah. the same way. The puffy loofah didn't do it for me, but I have I have a couple other brushes. I got so <laughs> I have their scalp scrubber, and when that came. <laughs> So this thing looks like a tiger paw, right? It's it's a little hand brush, and it's got these huge black spikes on it for scrubbing your scalp. And I scared the crap out of my son because he looked at it, and they look like it looks like some kind of medieval murder weapon. It's like the old like, yeah, school, ninja. like ninja climbing claws, almost. Yeah, it's pretty much what it looks like. <laughs> and he's like, "What is that? That's so cool!" And I was like, "Look at the spikes on it." And I jammed him in the stomach with it. And he was like, oh! And then he realized they're soft rubber. Oh. <laughs> they're like fingers. They're not really hard bites. Okay. And we had a good laugh about it. But yeah, it, both of my boys like using that. You put your shampoo in and you scrub real good and it works everything through your hair. You got a uh, discount code for the people? Of course. Black Bag 10 gets you 10% off your order. And uh, we just gave away a bottle of their, their brand new fragrance, Legend in the the sweat lodge the men's group on the bbr network so one more reason to join the network membership has its privileges people so that's it for this episode be sure to check out the sponsors we mentioned earlier if you want to join the conversation you can email us at new to pew at blackbagresources.com you can check out the website blackbagresources.com and if you really want to go deep you can check out the black bag resources network and become a part of the community. Thanks for listening.